Hey people of YouTube, it's Christy. Welcome back to another Toilet Talk. So I actually have a good friend of mine, Bosco. My pronouns are undetermined. Undetermined, so that makes it fun. Yes. So you prefer like he, them, or them, they? Them, them. they works. Okay. Oh. He, she, she, she. Um, yeah. Bosco is actually an ex-roommate of mine. I've known him for them for about six years now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, about six years. They actually do lots of drag performances and stuff like that, and I want to kind of have him come on and talk about some of his experiences, you know, what he likes about drag, what he doesn't like about drag, and a whole bunch of other fun stuff like that. So let's go and get into it. So first up, so what is drag to you? Drag to me is definitely a form of expression. You can consider it an own, your own art form because you can basically go any direction with it. You can so, definitely go abstract, you can go normal, you can go more glamorous, mm -hmm. and it's your style, you make it how you want it. So it's more of like a performance than it is like an identity. Right. Yeah. Like see, uh, I know when I first came out as trans, a lot of people thought I was just doing drag, and I had to explain to them, it's like it is, there are different things. It's, they are on like the LGBT type spectrum in a little bit, in a way. And, you know, I've known many drag performers who aren't gay, and then many who are gay, and you know, some of her trans and some who aren't trans. Like the, for me, and also all the performers I've seen have usually been, it's more of like a performance. It's not really like a, that's who they want to be. It's more of just a kind of a fun show, from what I can tell. It can definitely seem like people are trying to express themselves um, if they can't in certain situations. Like, for example, if someone is a cisgendered male and they do feel like a trans woman, mm -hmm. they could begin to start and understand that by performing in drag and feeling more like themselves. So it's like an outlet for that rather than just right, right. Pent, uh, pent up fun stuff. Exactly. And it can also be just like you said, there are plenty of straight people who also do mm. um, drag. In fact, one of the competition winners here in Austin was a cisgendered female. Mm -hmm. So it's not all just gay guys. And that's another thing is that there's also a big misunderstanding the fact that drag isn't just men dressing up as women, it's also, there's drag kings and drag queens. So drag queens are obviously the ones who dress up as women, and drag kings are the ones who dress up as men. And both of them are equally as important in the drag community, from what I can tell. Uh, I've actually gone to many shows and I love, it's always a fun experience. So how did you get into drag? My first exposure to drag was actually with a cousin of mine who was already doing drag himself, he was mm -hmm. a little bit older, mm -hmm. and one of his friends was coming over to hang out with him. and asked have you ever done drag so mm -hmm. um, the first time I ever did it was at my cousin's house with his friend they did my makeup my hair my outfit just threw it all together and after that we went to a bar and that was my first time out in drag mm -hmm. so it was a lot of fun and it was a fun memory what qualities does your drag persona have that you would like to have because it's definitely an extension of myself I'd say the confidence that mm -hmm. my drag persona which wasn't introduced Ruby Oh, um, Ruby. Yeah, sorry. Ruby. I'm, I, I'm learning a lot of this okay. stuff too. Like, I really don't know much about drag. So. It's okay. It's fine. Bringing on my persona as a drag queen, it definitely makes me feel more confident. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's something that I can go out and be noticed rather than just another person on the street. And that by itself can be a confidence booster. So when it comes to putting on a persona, mm -hmm. it's definitely something that makes me feel confident um, compared to other things when I'm just feeling kind of level. And the name Ruby, how'd you come up with that? Was it just like a name you always liked or was it just a... Yeah, yeah. Ruby was actually um, my birthstone in mm -hmm. July and the idea to use that as my name was actually from my cousin the first time he ever put me in drag and went out with me. Mm -hmm. um, his name at that time was Amethyst, his birthstone. So Amethyst is where it's at. Everybody loves Amethyst. Yeah. So that's kind of where it happened, and I just stuck with it. I didn't feel reason to change the first name. I like it. I know, like, names are always a weird one. I always think it's weird how people come across their names. Like, sometimes it's super symbolic. Like, oh, my grandfather's nephew's niece's dog was named... Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. And so then now I'm Chrysanthemum. Have you come out to... Like, have you... Expl do your parents know about you cr dragging, doing drag? And, uh... Like, what are their thoughts if they do? My bo Both my parents know. Oh. Um, a lot of my family knows because I don't really try to hide it. Mm. I don't have a need to. It's... It's not really something to be ashamed of. It's not something to be ashamed of, exactly. Mm. It's something that a lot of people do all over the country and probably the world. I wouldn't be surprised. It's just something for fun. Good. So you don't really have to worry about that. 
oh, what do they think about this and what do they think about that? As for my parents' opinion about it, they actually are both okay with it. Mm -hmm. My mom thinks it's really entertaining. Has she been to any of your shows? She was with one of them. It was okay. during a competition, so she did get to go see that, and that was nice. My dad doesn't really have a positive or negative. He kind of mm -hmm. just accepts it as it is. So are you doing a TFF this year for the drag show, or are they doing a drag yes. show this year? Nice. Yes, this year we're going to be doing another drag show. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a whole hour and a half to fill up, so <laughs> I'm pretty excited. But it's kind of like... Didn't y'all do an hour and a half last year, or was it just an hour? I think it was an hour and a half, but we had a really big intermission in the middle. Mm -hmm. This time we're going to be doing a few different things that are going to help take that intermission and shorten it, but mm -hmm. also keep it interesting enough so people are not becoming bored with just sitting there. I gotcha. And, and in case y'all are wondering, TFF uh, is actually Texas Furry Fiesta. It's a furry convention that is held out here in Texas once a year, obviously once a year yearly. Um, it's actually held over in Dallas. It's the third largest furry, con fourth largest furry convention. I think they just went up to three. I yeah, it's one there. of the largest furry conventions in the United States, and if not, if not in the world, it's one of the largest. And they raise tens of thousands of dollars to charities like, you know, uh, local animal shelters, rescues, and stuff like that. So, really cool. But they also have a lot of performances there. And drag performances are definitely one of them. So kind of like the last, like, big question. Like, what kind of misconceptions are there of drag performers? Like, it was like, before you started performing, doing it now, and when people come up to you who have, like, no idea anything about drag, mm -hmm. like, what is the biggest, like, misconception that you've noticed? A lot of people will have a misconception that drag is either too complicated or hard or they don't think they could do it. But when it comes to being a completely different person on the outside, you get that, that kind of confidence, mm -hmm. you know, so you start to develop a character that you can be. And it's not that difficult once you know basics. So And, and that actually reminds me, it's a lot of like the furry fandom in a way, especially when you're in your first suit. Uh, you have a tendency of getting like your, your character in suit is a lot of times different. You get that confidence because you're in the costume. So I can understand, I guess, once you get into that mindset, it changes. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not, you don't have to be the you that everybody knows. Mm. You can be crazy or silly or whatever. Drag isn't hard. It's super easy. I know that a lot of people are probably afraid of being out there in the spotlight. You don't have to perform. You can actually just go out and drag. Once you know the basics of makeup, and putting an outfit together, that's really all you need. I know makeup was one that, that like, my first makeup video was just laughably, laughably bad. Blech. You can't even say it because it was that bad. It was no, really bad. I remember that one. Yeah, it was, it was it was not good. I've gotten better. You've gotten a lot better. <laughs> it's a work in progress. I have to do it, like, every day, so I think it's just practice. I haven't jabbed my eye in, like, two weeks, so that's a good start. That's a good thing. Yeah, I jabbed my eye earlier, you're so welcome. you're fine. You're welcome. <laughs> so, and um, the third one? Uh, well, that was just one. Um, no, another okay. thing I do want to mention about um, drag queens is that they're all basically bitches. Like, <laughs> they're not. And I know that sounds terrible. Like, uh, in reality, when it comes to me being on the stage and performing, I probably am a little bit in your face and I can do what I want, but that's the persona that comes with the drag. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of the drag queens and kings that I've met are actually really nice people who do volunteer work, they have big families that they're really strongly connected with. When you see a drag queen and they come off as really rude, it may not be that. It's probably just the drag queen. Just like the persona that they have exactly, for that character. And, and it also makes sense because they almost have to be bombastic to a point where yeah. they have to be very over the top. Kind of for the character's sake, they almost have to kind of over-exaggerate a lot Exactly. Of you have to just be this... You don't have to, but of course most drag queens try to be this unattainable thing, so they do look down as the character. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that that's who they are. So. Don't think that drag queens are rude. They're, it's just they're it's awesome just people. Yeah, I know one of them. I know <laughs> at least one, two, two of them. I know yeah, two. Yeah, you know two. So cool. Yeah. Um, maybe. Well, I don't know Rowan. One and a half. Rowan kind of <laughs> does does kingy stuff. Sometimes. King, yeah. Not kinky. Kingy. He's, he's still doing the Haven Con thing, so mm. so he's gonna do good. Oh, and by the way, also for those who are in Austin or are going to conventions, another convention that's coming up here in in Austin is Haven Con. Uh, it's an LGBT friendly like uh, fandom convention like they do a lot of gaming and voice actors who come a lot to it and comics and a lot of furry stuff as well and they do have drag performances there and they do have what's it called the Haven Con Grand Illusionist Grand Illusionist yeah. that's it and they're doing the Grand Illusionist competition highly recommend Haven Con really cool place to go I, know. I spent a lot of money. actually last year I didn't spend a lot of money there only because I had lost my job that day yay wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Editing! Yay! <laughs> so it's actually just been a couple times I've done that where I'll mess something up and I'm just like, 
And then you're like slightly off. Just cut it off yeah. and it's done. <laughs> so uh, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Well, my natural light. Oh, with this beautiful Ooh. long hair. Okay, I'm glad you noticed. Yeah. yeah. Plus, I got a new one too, not nearly as white, but I like oh, it. Oh no, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you all for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. It really means a lot whenever y'all do. Yeah, I'll put a link for thank HavenCon you. down in the description down there. Uh, highly recommend it. Honestly, it's down here in Austin. It's a really sm it's not a small convention, but it's kind of like a mid-sized convention. Uh, a lot of really good vendors are there. A lot of good performances are there. Definitely worth going. If you like cosplay and geeks, that's a good place to yeah. be. Yeah, and it's what's nice about it is that it's, it's a safe place for LGBT. So if let's say you wanted to, you know, dress up as like the opposite gender, or let's say you want to dress up as female Thor, but you normally don't, they don't care. Like everyone's super respectful there, and it's just part of the, part of the course for there. Just don't go naked. Don't go naked. You can't do that. I tried. I... I have a confession. Oh no. I was gonna go naked. No, I wasn't. I, <laughs> I was gonna go just with a, a jeggings, but just for my bra. But just... Oh. Just a bra jeggings? Okay. Would that be? Those jean leggings. Oh. A jar... draw? Jean bra? It's a shawl. It's a, a shawl. shawl. I'll wear a it's, shawl. It's a shit bra. It's a shawl. shawl. I'm gonna stop talking. No, you're fine. Uh, one last thing I do want to say, guys, mm. is um, I'm kind of single, so hey, daddies, hit me up. <laughs> hey, uh, Queen is single and ready to mingle. <laughs> I am oh. too, but I'm not high on many people's to-do lists. Sorry, I gotta just... You gotta put your bra... You gotta fix your I boobies. Gotta, I gotta fix my your, your boobies are lopsided. Mm. Mine are also growing lopsided, <laughs> but I can't fix that. Maybe you can fix that spine. Yes, just... I know a great plastic surgeon. Well, one day. I mean, that's actually down the down the road thing for me. I'm gonna get like size quintuple J's. That sounds painful. It probably does. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Well, uh, like again, like, comment, subscribe. Y'all have a great night, and thanks again for watching. Thank you.